Today we'll be doing something on Mapbox. Actually, Mapbox Studio. Mapbox is something is used to create maps. Um, it is used to create maps uh, and basically web maps. You can actually print with things. With, you can actually print the maps you create with Mapbox. All right. So um, here is the Mapbox uh, uh, interface after you sign into your account. Um, you can access studio from this link or traditional way. This is actually new. Go from here. Uh, all right. So um, basically, you find uh, some uh, slot styles. You can also upload your own style if you do have. Or we're going to use one of the custom ones. So for if you want to make a new uh, map, let's create new style. And here. Okay, so here you you have to choose templates of what you want to uh, for what you want. You can choose blank template if that's what you want. If you have interest in using something like this for the basic, which is uh, pretty much, I mean, it's, it's kind of going to have just about everything you need for a basic map. So yeah, then you have a base in it. You have to choose different colors, you can choose dark. This is like the one they use in Triple App. I think, yeah, this one they use in Triple. The web interface that I've checked out uses dark one, and it's kind of cool. Um, so uh, let's customize the map. When you select that, it opens for you an interface that has all the um, that has a map view and uh, a layer view by the side. This is what it would, of course, in AJS, you will see this, or even QGIS, these are called uh, the components uh, area. Of course, they have components and layers, and this is the map. All right, so let me just walk you through the things you are looking at here. Yeah, so we are here in the interface. Uh, we can see the map view here. And around here, you will find the components. And then around here, in this other tab, you can see the layers. Basically, in GIS, this is actually GIS. GIS stands for Geographic Information System. In GIS, you, we, we, we observe or interact with the world in layers. It's basically a combination of layers that produces a map. A layer could be roads, a layer could be buildings, it could be persons, it could be people, it could be points. So all of these points combined, all of these layers combined together will give you a map. Everything you are seeing on this screen right now are controlled by a given layer, which I think you'll get to see as we go along the tutorial. Now, so here you have components. All right, so um, uh, basically, like I was saying, in GIS, everything is structured in layers. Um, position of features on the surface of the earth, position of immovable features, basically features that will not be moved tomorrow. For instance, there are features regarding positions of cars, those ones can change. But features that are fixed on the surface of the Earth are basically referred to as planetary uh, positions. And we're going to look at how we interact with natural resources, uh, basically land and the rest of that, for the sake of time. For you to fully customize this map, you have different components. You have the building, administrative boundaries, buildings, waters and skies and the rest of that. All of these things can be com configured and each of these components have in them multiple uh, layers, as this can actually sort of uh, let you see. All right, so we want to, for us to, for the purpose of this lecture or this presentation, I will customize a few layers. But just keep in mind that that customization would apply to every other layer in that component. If you want to view layers in this place, if you did not select this. If you open here, you find all the layers here. But it will give you little or no information. But when you want to see layers in the land and um, sky region or here, when you select it and create all. Oh, uh -huh. Okay. They've changed this so if you component layer by clicking this one, sorry about that. 
So normally you should, you should be able to do it by doing this one. If you want to view the layers under here, you are meant to look at this, click on this button, view the layers, the components of the layer, or the layers of the components. Now, when you click that, you find that this, these, or inside these, you, you will see the, the components of this particular layer. But our interest, as you can see here, this defines the lines. Remember, each of these things here are mostly lines. This defines the color of the lines. This defines the polygon, which gives you the shape. Then same thing goes for the waterways and the rest of that. But my interest right now would be on land use, which is the, the land that is being, that is currently used. Basically, there are two things we refer to, particularly in, in image classification of a geospatial, of, of a particular space. Uh, we, find, we refer to land use and land cover. Land cover refers to things about um, land areas that are currently fallow, land areas that are covered by vegetation so are generally referred to as land cover. Then land areas that are covered by fit infrastructure, like built up areas, uh, including parks, road, bridges, structures, houses, schools, and all the rest of that, they are basically land use, so lands that are already in use for urbanization or whatever I want to look at it. And now the key thing that I want to do here, basically to, these are things you can do to each of these layers, but let us find, let me show you, or maybe demonstrate to us a few things we can do about this. Now, as you can see here, each of these layers have a lock. This shows that for you to effect any change in this particular color of this layer, you need to override it. And then when you do that, it unlocks and gives you options to customize the colors at different levels. Now let's customize this color at zoom level 15. Now, uh, what you will see here is, you can see your zoom level or zoom range here or here at the top of the screen. So when you customize things in this range, it will, be, it will take effect on the map, let's see that action. Now, under the land use area, like I mentioned, things that are land use, you will find parks, airports, cemetery, glaciers, hospitals, beaches, sand, I don't know why they call this as land use, and then schools and the rest of that. So now if you notice one thing, this particular map has a default value where if for some reasons you didn't put the, you, you, you added a new component and they don't assign it the color, it falls back to this one. All right, so now let's customize the colors of parks, maybe give you an idea of how you can change that. Now I want to change what parks look like. You can do that in this color uh, palette here. As you can see, as you are changing the colors, all of these places that are parks begin to change color. This tells you that um, this particular layer or this particular thing you're applying here is taking effect on this map and these are the layers so um this becomes the color of this particular of, of of parks in this place for you if you want to inspect it you can actually click here and then you find what you're looking for if you, if you click from this line from this particular uh button here to bring it back to this okay uh, so but that is not what we're going to do we're going to use that to see the next things now this one way you can actually customize your layer to give you a different feel okay yeah so um Let's try different approach. As you can see on the board, there are different, this is a green area and we may want to change it and it's a symmetry. For another way to access your layers, to access customization of the layers can be to click it from the screen. If you click it from the screen, it will give you an idea of the component, which is rightly so, land, water, and sky is the component where you find symmetry. Now to go straight to the layer, you can click here and then when you click on land use, it will open up this thing for you. Instead of all those times you went through this place, then when it opens it up for you, you can edit it at this zoom level again, and come to symmetry and make it a little bit, uh, a different color of gray. Okay. Now remember, this gives you an, a chance to revert your changes. If you made a change here and you don't like the change, and you don't know the color used in the time pass, you can actually click on, on reset 
will take you back to the original color of the symmetry and then you can save it and you are good to go all right so that is one thing and now if you look here you will find that this is where the data source is all right now these areas that are red like you can see here are features that have been filtered out by the people who prepare this map all right so maybe what you wanted to do you want to show residential areas and not other layers at all all right but this in this area things have been fit, filtered out so you need to find what you need to define your own components or your own layers in this place so when you come to filter as you can see here you cannot access any filter or make any changes here if you did not eject this particular filter because it's been, it's been this is preset by the system and you cannot alter it and now you want to see if you want to check what these red buttons are you can pan around not pan around you can move your mouse around and click on any place on the map and it will give you an idea of the class so you find that a majority of the places that have been filtered out are residential areas now assuming your map is meant to show just residential areas and not cemeteries and not parks then you need to enable these layers that are filtered out so that it can give you residential areas okay so to do that you have to close all this and come back to your components remember residential areas is found in here so remember you have to actually filter it out to have ejected for you to be able to customize those uh, things so you have to click on eject components so when you click on eject components it gives it, it gives you some warnings to let you know that you're about to eject something and you may not you may want to revert it in the future now when you click on eject layers it will eject this layer from the system and allows you to fully customize the layer. All right, great. So now the, the layers have now been ejected. This gives you full, full access to customize it as your heart, your heart content. Now you come to the, now you want to customize land use. Remember, you want to show just residential areas most. Now you come back to your data area. Now you have access to filter. You find all of these ones. Now, this is the current condition that that defines this filtration you are seeing here and is defined by classes. Now you want to remove this condition and add your own condition. And it's always helpful to filter by classes because most of the things it's a short filter by class. Now your filtration will be done by class. Okay. Now when you open up this particular, when you click on this pencil icon, it leads you to all of the classes in the map. Remember your focus is on residential areas. Now, as you can see, residential areas are not even here. So, but because it's a class, you can type residential. I find that it works. Now it shows you this button here to use residential and you click on it. Then residential gets populated into here. That, that, that way you will be able to filter all this things out. Okay, now, now, so when that happens, you can, you can add parks. You want to show parks, you want to show schools something schools and hospitals each of them turns white when it's red green when you select them all right so on to social pitches now you see more things are beginning to reveal as you select things because they begin to turn green now i've filtered out symmetry because i don't want to show symmetry that is why symmetry is still red so when i'm done i can save my condition and when i come back to styles i have the yeah, the privilege now to customize all of that. Now I want to add a field and the field I want to add will belong to, I want to add uh, something for parks and I want it to be really, really green. Okay, so uh, this is basically what is about, customizing them based on different colors to your heart's content. I see there are a number of questions and I would like to finish up in the 10 minutes we have. So in the North Shell, in the North Shell, you want to, what happens in Mapbox basically is understanding what component contains layers you want to customize. When you find that particular component, you can then open the layers of that content, that, uh, that particular uh, component, then style it as you want. When you're done styling it, if you want to go for that, add more layers to it, you can go to data setting it, yeah, then eject it. When you reject the particular one that you want to change, 
you can then fully customize that uh, component. In, in summary, components help you customize something in a, in, a, in a larger scale. If you want to customize all of natural features, you don't want to go individually. You can pull that customization off under or using the components. Um, and that is it. Uh, after that, do I want to uh, publish your work? Remember, you can print, like I mentioned, you can print your work from here to whatever you want. We're not doing that. Then you, down here, you can find history. This history gives you an idea of all the things you've changed during your, your work. So if you want to revert to the time where you've not ejected your layer, you can find that here in the history tab. And then you have share. This is mostly where the guys who devs might need it because this is where you can copy the API links. If you want to preview this on the web, you can use this to preview it on the web. But I feel uh, for other for developers, this particular window is of greater importance to them. So uh, then to publish, you can click here to share your work. What this shows you on this end, this is the this is the one you've done. This this side shows you what customizations you've made. This side shows you the ones how it was before you came. And then as you can see here, this this was one of the features we enabled recently. By default, it wasn't here. And by default, all of these ones here, uh, these other things here were not here by default, but we showed it because we wanted it to show on our apps. So that's it. So the same process applies to every other feature on the map. When you are done with and satisfied, you can click publish to publish your work. So um, that is the end of the presentation. I hope this makes sense. Uh, I will answer your questions. Can we create multiple components in a layer? No, you can't. Remember, a component contains layers. Layers are contained in components. So you cannot create multiple components inside a layer. It's not even possible. But you can create multiple components in the content pane and add multiple components. Example, we are showing people working Will we create a component on layer or another layer which contains people? All right, great. This is a good question. If you want to show people working, remember I mentioned something about planimetric features. Now, static mouse basically will give you planimetric features. People working will be more of a simulation because if you want to show people working, it should give you real life or live satellite feed. But you can show people moving by data simulation. I don't know, like data. You can show change of position change of points, which indicates how people are moving using their change in, in space, which now means a, a, a user was in location X, Y, Z, and in, in seven minutes ago, then the user now is in location X, Y, Z uh, now. So seven minutes ago and now is the time of change. So with that particular change, and even in AGIS, you can simulate that in your story maps and in your 3D maps in your scene and the rest of that. So yeah, you can do that. For people to move, it has to be some sort of simulation based on data from a sort of a source online. Can we use basic feature of this tool for free? Yeah, I'm using it for free. I have no paid version. Yeah, you can use it for free. I hope this is helpful. Hey dear, if you like that video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and turning on notifications so that you don't miss any of our future videos. Thank you.